I mean, I never heard before in a democracy a government proudly talk about uh, uh, an opposition mukt democracy. What kind of democracy is that? You know, a put Putin like democracy or a North Korea like democracy. So you use elections just as a totem or a symbol. So therefore, this election becomes very important. That's why we are calling it the second freedom struggle. We are calling it the uh, election which will save democracy or the constitution. Welcome to Edina. I am Swati. And we are at Gandhi Bhavan, Bangalore, where today a consultation meeting was happening. I am here with Tista Setalwad, who is a civil society activist, and we'll talk to her what was this consultation about and what are her ideas about the election that have just five, face, five phases of election that has just winded up in other states. Welcome, welcome, Tista. So, Tista elections have just finished in your state, Maharashtra and uh, five phase of elections are over now we are looking forward to the two phases what is your idea about the, what do you think these five phase election how did they went about see first of all i think the elections became a really good fight uh, it was not expected that around february march when we started off on this whole process that there'll be such a spirited fight by the people by the mass organizations people's organizations even the political opposition together to actually put up a fight against this government and regime and i think it was a coming together of uh, independent activists people's movements along with the political opposition that has made this election into an actual fight now numbers are very difficult to predict and it's maybe not a great idea to do that but i think we can say that the narrative is now clearly one which even the commercial media is forced i don't call it mainstream anymore the commercial media is for forced to also admit that there is a fight that the people of India have given a challenge uh, along with the political opposition to this regime. So yes, it's been, a, it's been a difficult battle, but it's been a consistent campaign. It also has shown up a lot of the lacunae in the system itself, which is the system of uh, the bureaucratic uh, system under the election commission, the governments, even the political opposition and their organizational readiness to fight. There have been a lot of limitations which have come up. So I think there are a lot of lessons for the future. But I think we need to remind ourselves, each one of us, who are involved in activism for 35 years almost of different kinds, that Article 324 to 326 gives us the right not just to ex um, exert universal uh, franchise, but for us to have a free and fair election, which means that we are, we, it is our right to demand of the government in power, of the election commission, that it's a level playing field, there is accountability, there are no corrupt practices like the use of money or hate uh, speech during elections. So all of that has been called into question. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about the transparency of election commission. Many of the candidates are saying the form 17C is not given to them and already five phases of election are over. How are we going to expect transparency further in the next two phases and now that the counting and the results are going to be declared on the 4th of June? What do you feel? Uh, before I come to that 17, the, the form B and 7, form 17C, I'd just like to also point out that like elections in 2014 and 2019, the 2024 elections have seen flagrant violations of the model code of conduct by uh, star campaigners, by the ruling party, in terms of not just use of huge number of resources which are not accounted, but in the kind of content of the speeches made, which is a direct appeal, uh, appeal to you know, uh, majoritarian religious sentiment and this thing which is a corrupt religious practice under 123 of the Representation of People's Act. But coming to this point, you know, um, the right to free and free election means that my vote, once I cast my vote, it is, it is recorded as I cast and it's counted as it is recorded. And that has been the whole controversy around EVMs. I won't go into that now. But it, it is by law, the right of the uh, returning, uh, right of the uh, boot, boot level uh, polling agent of every, every candidate, not every party, mm -hmm. of every candidate to obtain the seven, uh, form 17C and the form form B at the time of closing so that there is no scope for manipulation. Even if we assume that the percentage of voting figures change a little bit because of the calculation of form C by the next day, the form 17C at the time of counting day is my and your weapon in terms of the uh, 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 candidates, uh, polling agent, to ensure that all the votes actually tally. And I, 
and we don't understand none of us understand that's what the dis discussions were about today the the complete obduracy and reluctance of the election commission to actually release uh, that data of actual numbers of votes polled and in many cases we are told by the political opposition of not giving them the fo form 17c that is clearly a violation of the law uh, you mentioned about the meeting today so today uh, there was a meeting about because there is a fear among civil society and general public that there is a very high possibility that their election mandate could be stolen. And today was a consultation meeting regarding that. Could you shed some light? What was the meeting about and what were the final resolution of the meeting? Yeah, the kind of slogan that has emerged is voters will must prevail, which came out of the whole feeling that uh, given the way the uh, ruling parties behave, and let's also f remember that the way this election commission was appointed, violating the Supreme Court order, the, uh, the, the government of the day appointed an election commission without uh, um, taking into consideration the opinion of the Chief Justice of India. So it is not an independent, autonomous appointment. They actually changed the law and that law has been challenged but has not been stayed yet. So the, the manner of appointment of this election commission raised doubts, the functioning has raised doubts, the lack of trust has raised doubts, and the complete silence and obduracy has raised doubts. So therefore this meeting was called to discuss that now that we are end of the fifth phase, which is more than halfway through, two phases are left, there's going to be a critical counting phase and then there's going to be four days before the declaration of results. And on the day of counting, uh, no, at, at the end of the last phase, which is on first, all the exit polls will start. Now, one of the stories of this election has been the huge shift of the viewership from the commercial media to the independent media, not just channel like Edina, but in all languages you have, you know, Tamil, in Gujarati, in Marathi, in Hindi, English, you have YouTubers and you have digital media platform that I think have got much more credibility today than the uh, Godi media or the commercial media which has got if it is extremely uh, influenced by the government and even terrorized by the government so the, the fear is that both at the level of narrative and at the level of uh, actual counting there will be an attempt to capture the people's mandate by providing a false narrative through the exit polls and then of course on counting day because the 17c has not been provided so there will be levels of manipulation. So therefore the idea is to discuss what can be done now at this stage and among the conclusions that we reached was that a kind of uh, citizens vigilance commission will be appointed, we will seek uh, former judges, former bureaucrats, academicians, experts, activists to be part of this commission to actually act as a vigilant pressure group and reflect on both issues, the narrative and the actual counting processes as the complaints come in and constantly keep briefing the independent media about it. And we start doing this right on, immediately in the next two, three days. Apart from that, the idea is at the level of constituency level, uh, the 542 constituencies, at least in 200 or 250 constituencies, to try and ensure that local citizens groups are going to visit the strong room and coming back, seeing if the 24th April uh, 2024 order of the Supreme Court has been implemented or not. That order, 26 April, sorry, 26 April order, recent order, yeah. actually said that the strong room should be completely protected, that the candidates should be confident that there is no tampering with the uh, electronic voting machine, etc. And therefore, all these aspects will be actioned by different levels of citizens' groups through a interactive process, peaceful, creative and vigilant and nationwide. That is the idea. Tista, you have been a social activist for uh, over three decades, as you said, and uh, you were part of this uh, civil society movement of Wake Up India, Wake Up Maharashtra for last uh, couple of months. What is your message to common public, the voter who are going to vote in the next two phases and the civil society activist? No, for actually, the coming days. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that Idelu Karnataka, which was active during the time of the Karnataka state elections, I was physically and morally part of that as well. I've always been. And then, of course, the M24 and the Wake Up India call, which was given, and many organizations came under it. And I think we learned a lot of lessons from each other. And then groups have been spawned all over the country, including Maharashtra, Karnataka, of course, uh, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, many, many states, such groups have come up, who, who in their different ways, not necessarily in the same way, but are also intervening to ensure voter registration, voter participation, high level of women's participation in the vote, uh, voter consciousness, consciousness of voting rights, what are my rights under 
uh, Article 324 and interactions with the local offices of the State Election Commission in various states. And it has been an educative process and an involving process. And I think therefore um, many, many communities which are so far disenfranchised have got very involved uh, in the process and uh, we hope that the results will show that. It has also been an exercise in boosting the morale of the political party, op opposition. Because uh, the political opposition, let's not forget, was also battered by this regime. All sorts of unethical methods were used, even uh, keeping aside their own innate organizational weaknesses. They were also particularly targeted in a very vicious way because, I mean, I've never heard before in a democracy a government proudly talk about uh, uh, an opposition mukt democracy. What kind of democracy is that? You know, a Putin-like democracy or a North Korea-like democracy. So you use elections just as a totem or a symbol. So therefore, this election becomes very important. That's why we are calling it the second freedom struggle. We are calling it the uh, election which will save democracy or the constitution. And all of us are independent, okay? I want to assert this, that we are not part of any political formation. And yet we have aligned ourselves to the India formation because we believe that that is the only vehicle through which this government can be dislodged. And therefore it is a fight for the survival of this country as a democratic secular republic for the constitution and for democracy itself. So we'll wait for the results on 4th of June and we hope that voters will, will prevail. With this, this is Swati with Devraj Rai Bagi signing off from edina.com. Matashto Vishesha video kalanu nodalu, matto hosa video kala bagay tiriyalu. Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe maadi, matto bell icon click maadi.